Hi, I'm Debs and I'm here to talk to you about planning your answers and writing uh, answers in depth in your exams. We'll focus specifically on the pathophysiology exam here to give some context to what I'm saying. And what I'll do is I'll highlight what usually goes wrong when students fail and how you can avoid this. So the most common things that go wrong in this exam for students, and actually in most exams, is that students fail to give enough detail when answering the question. Usually for the pathophysiology exams, you're writing in an essay format, so you'll be given some information about an incident that you're then going to have to comment on in that essay. So basically, you're going to write an essay based on the information you're given, and you're going to say what's going on for the patient, how you know this in detail, how you're going to intervene, and why you would take this approach. So the markers don't just want a list of things that you would do. Um, you're essentially being asked to to kind of think and write through all the things that would be considered when you attend a real life incident. This can be quite tricky for some students eh, and those who fail this exam usually do so because they haven't shown they know enough about the topic and, and maybe don't say why and how they should intervene and how they know this. You also have to be really careful to pay attention of exactly what's being asked of you so don't just write absolutely everything you know about a topic with no reference to the question um, that's been asked of you. You have to also um, show a level of depth and critical thinking in your exam answers. So first of all right now, it's probably quite useful to think about the differences between being descriptive and showing depth and, and critical thinking. So basically description tells you the what. That's going to say this is what has happened, this is what the, the incident suggests, this is what the, the condition is, this is what the, the, the patient is presenting with. Then the critical thinking part tells how you how do you know this? How do you know that that's what this is? And then what would you do and how do you know that that's what you should do? How is what you're going to do the best course of action to take? And sometimes that's going to include ruling other conditions out. So you might say from the observations that have been presented, this could also be another condition. However, in this instance, it's been ruled out because. So that's showing how much you know as well. It's showing what you know because you've been able to rule something else out. And a lot of students fail to do that. They just they just kind of jump in and see what it is. So you think about what is it? How do you know that? Is there anything else it could be that you've ruled out? Um, to help with structure for this, um, because it is an exam um, essay type question, I really recommend, highly, highly recommend spending a good bit of time at the beginning of each answer writing a plan. It's, um, it's a good way also to get lots of things out your head and down in the paper right away. Having a plan also helps you think about your structure. As I said, as you've been asked to write an essay, there has to be a clear introduction, a kind of main body with your key ideas, and you have to have a conclusion that sums up what you've written in the main body and maybe tells us what might be next for the patient. It's also useful to work out um, your timings before the exam. You know the paper layout and you know how long you've got to do the exam, so you can work out how long you've actually got to answer each question before you go in and maybe even write your timings down in the paper to, to make sure you stick to them. So you're maybe going to need 5-10 minutes at the beginning to read, read the paper over and um, pick what question you're going to answer first and then also do a plan for each of the questions which can maybe take about five minutes and then maybe leave yourself maybe five ten minutes at the end for proofreading and, and maybe adding anything extra that you can so if you had four questions to do in three hours by the time you take the planning into account and the reading over of the paper you've maybe got about 40 ish minutes 40 ish minutes per question and again marks are being awarded for how you show that you understand the content, that you can structure and that you can apply your knowledge and understanding to the specific question that's asked. So do make sure you answer the question that's there and, and not the one that you, you hoped was there. So to go back uh, to critical thinking and, and getting good marks, it's worthwhile thinking about how do you actually show critical thinking in an answer. And as I've said, you have to show that you know what's happening, but also how do you know this? So for example, what things have you ruled out? Why have you ruled them out? do the symptoms or observations point to more than one condition. Um, and this can be quite tricky um, for some of you because your experience might just be telling you what the thing is and you might just jump to that conclusion immediately without really thinking through why you've ruled something out. But in the exam you're almost having to kind of write through this process that might be happening really, really quickly in your head. Um, so don't do yourself a disservice by not expanding and giving enough detail when you're discussing the topics. So the things that I've listed here in the slide are, are the things that you can do to show depth when you're writing an exam answer. 
So when telling us what the problem is for the patient, can you give examples of how big a problem this is in general? Um, so if it was about drug use, do you have a statistic or a rough idea of how big a problem it is? Um, can you let us know who's most affected by this in the population and maybe why that may be the case? And doing these things shows the marker that you really know this topic inside out. And you can also think about, are there any comparisons you can draw with different groups, um, adults versus children, age groups, gender? Um, also, what are the alternative explanations uh, you consider for each patient, depending on what their observations are? So, what other medical issues could be being presented? How have you ruled it out? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the approach that you're suggesting for this patient? What are the drugs of choice in this instance? Um, why are those the drugs of choice? How do they affect the body? What do they do to help? So lots and lots of different things that you can think about uh, that you can address to really, really add depth to your answer rather than just jumping too straight to the point and saying, this is what it is and this is what I do. So it's really thinking about how do you know what it is? What would you do and why would you do this? Okay, and you can also, as I said earlier, think about in your conclusion, you might want to suggest what might be next for the patient. Now you might want to pause the video here just to have a read over this, um, but here's an example from a previous student in an exam situation. Um, this is a pretty good example of both an introduction and of critical thinking. Even without seeing the specific question that was asked of this student, you can see that it's a good introduction as it outlines what it thinks is going on with the patient and then goes on to show a bit of depth by giving some background inf information about the issue, which is cocaine in this instance. It also shows critical thinking as it talks through why it's come to this conclusion and what has been ruled out and also uses some evidence and references here to back up what's been said. Now there are many, many ways to write an introduction um, but the key things to remember here are you need to let the marker know what you think is going on and give some kind of background information for that, for that topic. This is another example you might wish to pause the video and take a few minutes to read over. Um, this example is much poorer um, for many, many reasons. Um, in the first part of the answer here, the student's just really repeating back the information that's already been given in the question, and there's really no need for this. Uh, it's much better just to be more succinct and tell the marker what's going on than just repeating all the details of the question back to them. It's not showing that you've understood it, and it really wastes quite a bit of time for you as well in the exam. It also reads just like a list of bullet points um, than an actual essay type answer. It just gives lots of lists of things that should be done as well without saying why or without, without giving, even thinking about what order they should be done in. Um, so overall it's just really quite disjointed, it's quite descriptive and just lists a lot of things without telling us why they would do these things. Um, what else could the patient be suffering from, what's going on inside the body and what would the drugs of choice do. So maybe have a look through the two examples here and hopefully that should really highlight um, the differences between being descriptive and being critical in an exam. So the key points for this short video are please read the question carefully and make sure that you've got a plan before you start just jumping into writing your answer. Um, if you have the plan as well, it stops you being too descriptive at the beginning of an answer. Sometimes students just want to put pen to paper straight away and just get everything out of their head that they know and a plan is the best way to do that. Then you can think about how you're going to structure your answer and give a really good answer rather than just a list of bullet points like the example we saw there. Thinking through and writing a plan this way as well can make sure you're covering all the aspects, so the epidemiology, the etiology, the pathophysiology, the differential diagnosis and the treatment and management of the condition that's presented. Also, make sure you give enough detail to show your thinking here and to show that you're not just giving a big list of interventions or descriptions with no real details uh, or depth to your answer. Finally, good luck for the exam.